In this overview lesson, you will take your first steps into the world of Houdini and its node-based workflow. You will use a variety of nodes to model, simulate, texture, and render a simple shot. This video will review the steps you're going to take before you dive into the lesson. Here's what you're going to learn. In the first lesson, you will discover the Houdini workspace with a focus on the panes you will use on a regular basis. Learning how to work back and forth between these interface elements will be an important skill moving forward. Along the way, you will model the coffee cup using various tools such as Poly Extrude, Poly Bridge, and Poly Fill. You will now take a break from modeling the cup to work with the nodes in the network view. The nodes act as a recipe that describes the flow of data from the top to the bottom of the network. Keeping this view of your scene organized and easy to read is important for when you return to it later on in production, or when you share your work with others and you want them to understand how you created the shot. It is time to learn how to drop gumballs into the cup you just modeled. Start by placing a box above the cup, scatter some points onto its surface, then copy spheres to the points to get a nice collection of gumballs. You will then use attributes such as color and p scale to add variety to the gumballs. The key is that you leave yourself open to the possibility of changes down the line. To create a scene for rendering, you're going to bring the geometry into the Solaris or Lops context of Houdini. Lops are used to prepare the scene for rendering. For studios building more complex lighting pipelines, Solaris offers a wide range of scene management tools. For an artist creating a single shot like the gumball scene, the setup is much simpler. To add texture to the ground, you will learn how to use the Cop or Copernicus context to work with procedural images. On the Quick Surface Material node is a button for creating a Cop network. You can then set up nodes that feed into Color, Specular, and Normal maps, or use the same image nodes to feed all three. This gives you the flexibility to generate textures without going out to a separate image processing application. Now that you have successfully rendered the cup in the ground, it is time to add the gumballs to complete the shot. This time you'll export the geometry directly to a USD file, then reference that back into the scene. For animated pieces like the gumballs, this works better when rendering with motion blur, since the motion is already cached. After the gumballs are in place, you will need to set up and assign a new material. Okay, so the client calls after reviewing the shot and wants to change the gumballs to candy eggs. The first step is to reshape the original sphere. Then you will need to re-simulate and recache the results. The client also proposes some compositing effects, uh, which you can add using slam cop filters. These can be applied to your rendering right in the scene view to make creative decisions for your final rendered sequence.